welcome along to Taking the Beers. If you're only just discovering this channel, you'll find it a place with resources for A-level business students. So if that sounds like you, definitely think about subscribing. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a topic known as hard and soft human resource management, or as NXL students may have learned it as, viewing staff as a cost versus viewing staff as an asset. And this really is about two contrasting approaches to utilizing your workforce. Almost two different philosophies when it comes to utilizing a business's employees. So if we start with a hard approach to human resource or what's known as viewing staff as a cost, firms that adopt this perspective see their workforce much like they might see other areas of their business as a resource that costs money. And some firms are very, very acutely aware of costs and cost minimization is a central part to their business model. So firms that adopt a hard HR approach approach their workforce from the point of view that they want to try and minimize the costs attached to it. And that has some techniques associated to it that might aid the business in trying to minimize its staffing costs. So the most fundamental way of doing that is to try and pay your workforce the minimal pay that you can. So we might be paying minimum wage rates to manual staff or lower salaries compared to rivals when it comes to managerial staff. But because we see our workforce as a resource that we need to try and minimize the cost of, we try to achieve minimal pay rates where we can. Associated with that, we're going to also invest less money in the very costly pursuit of training our workforce. So when the business is looking for employees with new skills that they need for the organization, maybe they've got new positions that they need to fill inside the organization, there's going to be less of an emphasis of training and developing our existing staff with the obvious cost that's attached to that. And as an alternative, we would prefer to externally recruit members of staff that we can parachute into positions with the ready-made skills that we're looking for already in abundance. Now, in order to keep costs down with this hard HR approach or where we view our workforce as a cost, we're also going to try and stick to the minimum legal obligations that we have to try and achieve when it comes to aspects of our workforce welfare, such as health and safety or employment rights. So we may only pay the, the legal minimum obligations when it comes to things like paid time off for holidays or for sickness or maternity or paternity leave. We're gonna try and drive staffing costs down by staying within the law and doing what we're legally obligated to do, but perhaps not going beyond those minimums. One other thing we might try and utilize when we view staff as a cost is giving staff temporary contracts as well, which is gonna make the workforce more flexible and more responsive to changing patterns of demand. So when the firm experiences an increase or a surge in demand, they may take on more workers, but only on temporary contracts. So if that demand were to diminish again, the firm is not left with the added cost of workers that they've taken on on a permanent basis. Instead, they can release those temporary staffs that they took on during more prosperous times. So we can clearly see the benefits of a hard approach to HR or viewing staff as a cost. By driving down the costs of the labor force, it allows the firm to experience lower costs overall, which might aid them in a strategy of being more price competitive, which might allow them to establish a market share in the industry that they operate in. Now, a hard approach is not for all business organizations. Some may prefer a softer approach to HR where they view their workforce as an asset. And with this approach, we will see the workforce as a selling point for the organization, something that requires nurturing 
and investing in and developing. And as we're doing that, there's an emphasis on trying to retain the employees that we have inside our organization rather than losing them to rival businesses. And there's a group of techniques that might support us in that philosophy, chiefly being more competitive in the terms of financial remuneration that we offer our employees. So rather than paying the minimum wage to manual workers, we would offer more generous hourly wages. When it comes to salaried staff, we try and make sure that the salary packages that we offer are more competitive when compared to other firms in our industry. And coupled with this, we may also try and offer more generous fringe benefits as well. So we could be offering greater paid time off or annual leave for our employees, more generous sick pay packages, other perks such as health insurance for our employees, longer or greater pay when it comes to maternity and paternity. But we're gonna try and retain our workforce and show them how much we value them by offering them greater financial remuneration, which obviously increases the staffing costs of the organization. We're also gonna invest more in training opportunities for our employees as well. So rather than always looking to recruit externally when we have positions to fill in the organization, we're gonna invest far more funds and time into training and developing the staff that we have so that they can learn new skills, that they can gain more qualifications so that when positions open up in our organization, we are in the position of being able to look to promote from within rather than always looking to recruit externally. So that allows the employees that have invested their own time into developing new skills to find new, more advanced positions in the organization where they may be able to add more value for the business. Final way that we might try and utilize this philosophy of seeing staff as an asset is to offer employees long-term permanent contracts in the organization as well. So although that might make the business less flexible or responsive to changing patterns in demand, it's gonna offer employees greater security, greater long-term prospects within the organization that they may find motivational. And so the greatest benefit of seeing staff as an asset or a softer approach to HR are the benefits that might surround motivation of our workforce. They may be more productive because they feel more of a part of the organization. They feel invested in, they feel valued, and they, they reward the business with greater rates of productivity and innovation and entrepreneurship that the business can use in order to add value. So it's a very common exam question to be posed as to which approach a business may be better adopting. And often that may depend on the objectives of the business. For those that are pursuing cost minimization strategies, it could well be argued that a hard approach to HR where they view their workforce as a cost might be a better strategy to utilize. Whereas other organizations that might have different objectives surrounding innovation or surrounding quality might be better served using a softer approach to HR where they view staff as an asset. Often where a business relies on its staff having face-to-face -face contact with consumers, a softer approach to HR may also be beneficial. But for firms that are in very price competitive industries, that luxury of paying to invest in your staff may not be something that they wish to pursue. In order to survive, in order to compete, in order to operate in a very price competitive market, some firms might feel that minimal investment in their workforce is a strategy that they are forced into. Now, one interesting idea when it comes to concluding essays on hard and soft HR is whether hard HR and viewing staff as a cost is as effective in lowering costs as we might first assume. And critics of this approach might say that while it lowers costs in the short run, 
in the long run, because of the absenteeism and labor turnover that it creates, and potentially because of the lower rates of productivity that it might result in, it can actually end up increasing the workforce costs of an organization in the long run because they're constantly having to replenish staff that they lose because of their lack of investment in them. So it's definitely something that we could think about utilizing in conclusions on that topic. Hopefully that will help you with your revision. We'll see you soon for another tutorial and make sure you keep on taking the biz.